a volcanic eruption hits Japan's Ayaka Island. Two little boys, Jingi and Yukito, are seen running for their lives, like rats running from cats. King promises to ensure Yukito is safe, so he urges him to follow him till they get on a ferry, waiting to transport them away from the island. They manage to get to where the ferry is, and meet an old man dressed in a suit like a local teacher. The old man asks about Momoko, and Jingi explains that Momoko-san is still leading the evac, back to the region that is getting destroyed by the volcanic eruptions. The old man urges them to get on the ferry before it's too late, but Jingi worries about Haruni and Akani, who are yet to join them, but the old man says, Master Makoto Yanagi has gone to get them off the volcano. However, he feels that if Yanagi doesn't return in time, maybe something bad has happened. Yanagi seems dumb and too overconfident. He does not know when to fold or walk away. He feels it's time to go on an adventure one last time, so the nincompoop enters the volcano. Suddenly, an explosive sound is heard from the ferry, and they all wonder what would have happened to the overconfident doofy headhead Yanagi, their master, and Yukito's father. Behold, that is the end of Yanagi, as no one on earth would survive volcanic eruptions. Yukito gets transported to foster care and leaves with the foster family on the mainland. Yukito receives a letter from Inu Sanji, a friend of his late father, Yanagi. Sanji explains in the letter that he sent Yukito to foster care to finish middle school. However, he will be picking him up and returning him to the Ayaka village to further his high school, just as his late father wished before died. He assures him to be his guardian, and also guarantees him a good life. Yukito wonders who the hell the person might be. He drops the letter and goes to bed. Yukito finds himself in a recurring dream. In the dream, he always finds himself alone under the water, covered with some shiny particles. Yukito is known for always avoiding people, so he feels more comfortable alone under the water in his dreams. Yukito keeps sinking in the water, till he gets to a scary cloudy part, and he suddenly wakes up from the weird dream. It's finally the graduation from middle school, and all the students are happy to graduate. Yukito is always isolating himself from others, and when he is packing his things, a lowlife woman, Sensei comes in to congratulate him on his graduation. Sensei asks him what next, so the lonely nitwit replies that he will be returning to his birthplace, as directed by his late father's friend. Sensei feels it's a bit selfish that they left him for years at the foster home, only for them to come when he is graduating to return him to his birthplace. Yukito does not wait to listen to her dumb story that touches the heart, so he walks away. The people at the foster home have been very nice to Yukito, but his lonely life is all his fault because he refuses to get along with them. On getting out, Yukito sees a scumbag drinking like a useless piece of shit. He wonders what the hell the lowlife fellow is, but does not seem so bothered and as a lonely fellow, he continues walking on his way. The alcoholic bastard sees Yukito and quickly runs over to him. He tells Yukito that he has been waiting for him, but seems not to know a young man who reeks of booze from alcohol, so he pushes him away. The booze boy moves closer to Yukito and throws him into the river. Yukito begins to drown, and it feels like what he always sees in his dream. His eyes begin to shine like a sparing blue light, and the d does not know what is happening. Just when he is about to drown, the crazy booze boy uses a spell to bring him out of the river. While Yukito is still wondering who the hell the bastard is, he gets trapped in a bag by the booze boy. The crazy booze boy is Jingi, but because of some years spent apart, Yukito could not recognize him. Jingi uses his magical bag to trap Yukito, and before Yukito knows it, he finds himself on a ship in the middle of a big sea. Yukito screams like a madman, but Jingi urges him to keep calm. Jingi explains to Yukito that he is taking him to his home on a Yaka island. He also explains to him that he was sent by Sanji, the old man who wrote the letter to Yukito. Jingi says, Yukito's father was a master, and also like a father figure to him. They finally get to the second island of Ayaka, and get picked by Makoto, the landlord of Yukito's childhood home, and the mayor of Ayakashima City, Inu Sanji, Yukito's guardian. They give Yukito a very nice welcome, and without wasting much time, they begin to drive to the first Ayaka Island. On their way, Yukito sees a flying fish, and seems curious about the type of creature. They finally get home, but Yukito is yet to remember anything. They show him the picture of his late father, but the dumbass wonders if the man was truly his biological father. Mokoto explains to him that his father was a lay master who kept harmony in Ayaka. Yukito wonders what lay means, so Jingi explains to his dull head that they are people who have some special abilities like them. Yukito wonders if the ability is also how he stuffed him in the bag when they were coming. Hearing this annoys Makoto, but Jingi immediately covers up and says they were only playing. Yukito feels his special power ability will be the one he sees in his dream, but Sanji says he only has brute force, but not yet with the basic downright. Yukito asks about his mother, 
but they are unable to say anything about her. Yukito asks why they suddenly come for him after abandoning him at the foster home for years. Sanji then begins to explain to him that it was his father's wish before he died. Yukito agrees to live with them, and they show him his room. On getting to his room, he sees the flying fish creature outside his window and wonders what it is. Jingi walks in and explains to him that the creature is called Matama. The species is not harmful, and that many of them are within the island. Jingi notices that Yukito is trying so hard not to get close to people, so he asks him why he is creating a barrier. Yukito then explains that, when he was still little, he and other kids from the foster home went on a riverside picnic. One of the kids was mean to him, and he got mad. Before he knew it, the river had attacked the kid. Yukito didn't know what happened, but he was sure that the river attacked the kid because of him. Because of this, he decided to keep distant from people, because that's the only way his emotions can be stable. However the story seems boring to Jingi, and the bastard is already playing a game. This annoys Yukito, so he decides to go out to clear his head so he won't get angry more. On getting to the riverside, he sees another species of Matama called the Era Matama. This species is harmful and different from the one he saw in his room. The Ara Matama enters the river and transforms into a huge, scary creature. Fortunately for Yukito, Jingi arrives out of nowhere just when Ara Matama is about to attack him. Jingo casts his spell, and a burning flame shows up in his hand. Without wasting time, he strikes the monster Ara Matama. Before he knows it, the monster Matama forms again, but this time, he throws Yukito into the stomach of the monster to use his brute force to dismantle the monster. Yukito does not understand what happened and is very clueless about his power. Jingi urges him to learn how to control his power. Instead of getting scared of being close to people, he urges him to wear his heart on his sleeve and they return home safely. The next day, the drunk booze boy, Jingi, wakes up and finds Yukito early in the morning, sitting around the water to learn and keep his heart around his sleeve just as he was informed by the sassy Jingi, Yukito wonders if we'll be able to learn how to control his power with Jingi's dumb training. Jingi assures him that he will be able to control his power, so far he focuses harder, and also feels his lay energy. Let energy seem like a discovery to Yukito, so he asks Jingi what the energy is all about. Jingi explains to him that the lay energy is a vital energy that flows deep in the earth and surges in massive waves beneath Ayaka Island. However, Jingi says Yukito's power flows completely unchecked. He also expatriates that aligning himself with a massive source of power will stabilize his own. Jingi urges Yukito to cast the spell he taught him just to see how fast and how well he is learning. Yukito crosses his hand just as Jingi always does when he is about to cast a spell, and he tries to cast the spell by saying, Calm is water which benefits all things. Unfortunately for him, the spell is not yet effective for him and all he can do with it is to control a bubble of water. Jingi then feels the need to do some show-off as his master. He urges Yukito to watch him closely as he casts the spell. He casts the spell by saying calm is water which benefits all things, flowing to places people avoid. This spell controls the water to form a water-like human-looking frame which can be easily controlled by the sassy magician Jingi. This does not interest the dumbass baby magician Yukito because all he wants to learn is not magic, but just how to control his power. After a while, Yukito decides to take a break from training. The slumberhead drunkard, Jingi returns home drunk and reeks of alcohol. Jingi begins to say rubbish as a result of the alcohol intoxication. The drunkard says he was going to put his drinks on his tab, but as soon as the guys at the bar saw his face, they demanded he pay them back. Jingi tells Yukito that he needs money to pay back his debt and wants Yukito to work for him. Jingi sounds retarded for asking Yukito to work for him so he can pay up his debt when the poor boy does not even know the type of work he can do to make money. The lumberjack then suggests that since Yukito is also a laymaster, he can get a job to pacify the Matama. As the scene unfolds, the nincompoops, Yako and Chitaro, are seen checking the job request box. Since the recent earthquake, the number of Ara Matama has been increasing, they find a job request in the box. Yako picks up the job request and tells Chitaro that he will take on the job. Jingi arrives and collects it from Yako. This annoys the boys, and they call him broke. The scumbags Jingi says he is not getting on the job for money, but as a means of training Yukito. Jingi introduces Yukito to Chitaro and Yako as the son of the late and great Rei master, Makoto Yanagi. He further explains that Yukito has returned to the land to train in the art of lay mastery. So he urges them to hurry to the third island and tidy up the shrine's yard or something. Chitaro feels they need to inform Kurama Sensei immediately about the arrival of Yukito. On their way, Yukito asks his lumberjack master, Jingi, about the two boys. 
so Jingyi says they are lowly grunts from Kaysen Shrine. However, Jingyi feels he would make a good friend with them since they are somewhat around the same age. Yukito feels getting close to them might lead to a big problem because of his power. But Jingyi feels, since the doofy heads are lay masters too, his power can be a problem for them. Jingyi further explains to Yukito that the Kasen Shrine is in charge of all Aramatama-related works, and that the sensei, Kimura Haraoki, who is the shrine head priest, is his senior. He feels if he asks him to train Yukito, he will agree. The job request is to pacify a Matama that started appearing in the canal for a while. The Matama are like fragments of life that spring forth from lay energy. Their presence alone is not a problem, but if they get corrupted, they become Aramitama and begin to cause harm. Just in time, the Aramitama that has been appearing in the canals comes out of a river. Yukito does not know what to do with it, but Jingi urges him not to think too hard and dive into it as part of his training. However, he assures him of stepping in if he can't handle it. Before Yukito turns, Jingi is already running towards the east. Yukito begins to run after the nitwit. Yako and Shataro immediately run to the sensei, Kurama, to inform them that Jingi has taken Yukito, the son of Makoto, and is up to no good, and that he even stole a job request. The Aramitama continues chasing Jingi and Yukito, but surprisingly, the Matama runs past Yukito and focuses on Jingi. They manage to jump into a river just to avoid being caught by Matama. An old man is at the other end of the river trying to catch some fish with his hook. Suddenly, his hook picks something heavy, and it turns out to be the low-life Jingi and Yukito. The old man thinks Jingi is drunk again, but the lame-ass drunkard says they are being chased by Ara Matama, which is why they jump and swim through the river. The old man urges him to pacify Matama as soon as possible, so Jingi says, it's one of the reasons why he is risking his hide on her on the job. Yukito feels they are putting themselves at a disadvantage by putting themselves against something so big, so Jingi feels they will have to put their ace in the hole. They see the Matama in the river once again, but this time, it's not yet moving as it hasn't seen them. They wonder why it's not moving yet. Jingi suggests that Yukito should act as a decoy. This gets Yukito so mad and wonders what type of master uses his wind student as a decoy. This leads to an argument, till Aramatama finally sees them and begins to chase only Jingi. Jingi wonders why the Matama is coming after him, so he urges Yukito to at least do something. Yukito decides to try the spell that he has been learning, and this time, it works. The spell falls on Matama, just when it's about to attack Jingi. This gives Jingi leverage over the Matama, so he uses another spell to pacify the Matama. The bastard begins to blab and run mouth thereafter. However, the Matama is full of water and some cans of booze that Jingi always drinks. This makes Yukito curious, so he asks where he was last night. He then explains that he was out with his friends drinking, and they asked him to demonstrate his lay power. He showed them his water control spell was trashed afterward, so he didn't remember what happened thereafter. Yukito feels since a water spell can be sustained long term by absorbing nearby moisture, the Matama may be the water control spell that he summoned when he was flexing his lay power with his friends, which is why it has been coming after only him. The Matama forms up again and begins to chase the loser. Luckily for him, Kurama arrives and casts his spell on the water Ara Matama and it fully pacifies the Matama. Yukito appreciates Kurama for saving them. Kurama says Yukito was still very small the last he saw him, but unfortunately, Yukito does not recognize him. He then formally introduces himself as Kurama Haraoki. He also says he studied directly under his father. Kurama gets home with Yukito and informs Makoto about the commotion caused by Jingi. Makoto is surprised to hear this, so Kurama explains that Lei's mastery spells function similarly to Matama, and if they are not well cast, they create space for Mitama to enter. Makoto asks about Jingi, but Kurama says he is currently reflecting on his action by picking up all the booze cans around the island as a punishment. Makoto suggests that they have dinner without Jingi since he won't be coming home soon. Kuruma begins to stare at Yukito while he eats and enjoys his meal and tells him that he hasn't changed. He says he has always loved curry since when he was little. Yukito seems to like Kurama's spell on Matama. However, Kurama says the Matama always cause violent rampages because they are suffering. He further explains that when the Matama are exposed to negative energy and lose control of their power, they become Ara Mitama and they return to normal by pacifying them. Jingi and Yukito are on their way to the first island of Ayaka, and they both go through the marine liner, a train that moves on the sea. Yukito finds it fascinating to see a train that moves on the sea. Jingi is not surprised by the way Yukito is acting like a village boy visiting an urban area for the first time, because he acted the same way 10 years ago, when he rode the marine liner. 
Jingi says they travel within the island on the marine liner, and everyone riding the train for the first time always gets excited just like Yukito. However, he feels he will get used to it and get bored of it with time. Yukito keeps getting excited about the marine liner train, so he asks if the train also uses the Lay Mastery spell. Jingi replies that the rail track seems to be laced with the Lay Mastery spell, but the train is powered by diesel. They finally get to the mansion of the man, Sanji. On the first island, Sanji feels Yukito is adapting well to the island. He asks if he is enjoying his stay in the Ayaka Island. Yukito remembers his crazy experience with the Aramatama, so he says the island is pretty weird. However, Sanji feels there is no need to rush, and he believes Yukito will get along with the island with time. Sanji urges the nitwit Jingi to take Yukito around, but the jerk says he needs to wait a bit because he also has a business, which is visiting the casino and pachinko parlor. Sanji urges Yukito to at least have some rest. But the duck decides to follow Jingi. They begin to wander around the first island. The island is so lively and has a lot of stalls. Jingi says the first island is a hub for gourmet food and music and refers to it as pretty ayastic. Yukito has been hearing people using the word ayastic and wonders what it means. Before he could ask the nonchalant fool, Jingi, the bastard had moved to somewhere else. Yukito looks around to find him, and suddenly hears his voice arguing with a seller of chicken thighs. Yukito moves closer to see what is happening, so he realizes that Jingi is trying to buy broiled thighs to eat, but the old fart seller refuses to sell it to him, and claims it has been bought in advance by a customer. However, the old fart man is ready to even give Yukito the thigh for free, but not Jingi. Yukito picks the skewer and drags the d*** away from the queue. Yukito asks Jingi how he got to know about the place, and he replies that he knew it from his friend Maki-san. Yukito wonders how he gets to have friends on the first island, even while he stays on the second island. The scumbag then begins to run mouth that he has friends everywhere. They see a street performer on a balloon, getting applauded by the people and suddenly, Jingi disappears again. The balloon suddenly begins to emit black smoke, and the people wonder what is happening. The dumb performer tries to get close and touch the balloon, but Yukito already knows that it's the Ara Matama, so he pushes the low-life performer away from getting attacked by the Matama. It is about to get crazy, and Yukito needs the help of Jingi. The Matama is not as big as the one seen on the second island, so Yukito feels he should be able to handle it. Suddenly a pink-headed man appears and begins to shoot the Matama, till it finally collapses and vanishes. Yukito wonders why the hell the man with the gun is, and wonders why he is shooting Matama with a gun. The pink-headed guy is Ibuki-san, and Yukito has heard about him from Makoto before. Ibuki-san urges him to address him as Aka. Instead, Aka is one of the students of Yukito's father, but he does not pacify Mitama. Instead, he kills them either with his gun that makes use of special bullets made from spells, or with his lay power. AKA takes Yukito to his business place and asks him to make himself comfortable. Coincidentally, Jingi also walks in, and Yukito asks him what he is doing there. The doofy head fool says he came to check on Maki-san, but since he was busy, he decided to make something for himself. Yukito gets annoyed because of how nonchalant Jingi is, but Aka calms him down. Jingi asks Yukito what he is doing with Aka, and he replies that Aka saved his ass in the tourist area when he got attacked by Ara Matama. Yukito wonders about the type of techniques that Aka used on the Matama. Unlike that of Karuma and Jingi, who always pacify the Matama and return them to normal and harmful Mitama, Aka power makes the Mitama vanish. AKA then says, it's because instead of pacifying the Mitama, he always exterminates them. Yukito wonders why he is killing the Mitama when he could have just pacified them like Jingi and Kurama, but he says a lot of people come to the first island for tourism, and since the Aramatama is harmful, they should get neutralized for the safety of the people. While they have this conversation, Ibarra comes in to inform Aka that the main body of the Aramatama has been found. Yukito is surprised to hear this, so Aka explains to him that the Matama he saw previously was just a part of the main big Aramatama. The main Matama always has core-like pupil eyes, but the previous one does not have one which shows that it's not the main Matama, but a fragment spun off from a bigger Ara Matama. Jingi tells Yukito about Aka security, where their sole responsibility is to protect the tourists from the harmful Matama. Killing the Matama does not sit well with Yukito, but Jingi feels Aka is doing the right thing. Yukito asks Jingi how Kuruma feels about Aka's technique, but Jingi urges him not to ever talk about Aka and Kurama, because they don't get along with each other, and are like water and fire. Suddenly, Jingi remembers he does not remember to get his allowance for working at Aka's shop, so he runs back and asks Yukito to return home without him. Yukito hears the voice of people shouting, so he quickly runs over to the place, 
because he knows that they are being attacked by the Matama. However, this is the main Ara, Matama, and it's very huge. Matama rushes in, and decides to try the spell he has been learning from Jingyi, to see if it will work. Although he knows that it will be disastrous if he fails this time, he needs to try regardless. Unfortunately for him, the spell works, but it's not enough to pacify the huge Matama. The Aka security begins to shoot at the Ara Matama, till they become short of bullets. Finally, Aka walks in and removes his suit. Jingi knows he is about to use a black power to exterminate the Matama, but the crazy head Matama killer begins to cast his black power spell by saying, Bold is the warrior, wrathful is the fighter, victory is achieved through pride, and such is the height of wickedness. His hand changed to a big black hand. After casting the spells, he uses the black magic hand to rip off the Mitama Akor. He breaks the core and drinks the blood. Aka says he will be stronger than Kurama, the dead master, and even the dragon. Jingi and Yukito leave the first island for the third island. The third island is kind of different compared to the first and second islands. The third island seems underdeveloped but very solemn. The nonchalant drunkard, Jingi, seems very tired after drinking two nights in a row, because he won big at the pachinko. Yukito asks Jingi if he comes to the third island often, but Jingi says the third island is a boring place that is mainly filled with forest trees, and that he only came because Yukito asks him to take him to Kurama. Although he comes once in a while, only during some festive period, only Kurama and his idiot students, Yato and Chitaro use the place regularly. Yukito already knows the names of Kurama's students, even without being told by Jingi. This surprises Jingi how he gets to know their names, so he says he got their names from Mikoto, because he wants to make friends with the lumberjacks, who always have a reason to argue or fight over even the pettiest thing. Not long enough, Chitaro and Yato arrive at the park to pick them up, as instructed by their master, Kurama. On their way to the Kizan Shrine, they begin to have some little conversation, and are willing to know how well Yukito is adapting to the island. Yukito is still bewildered, but he finds the whole Mistama stuff, and the marine laner surprising. Behold, the people of the island have been very nice to him, but because it still feels like a new adventure to Yukito, who has been lonely for the biggest part of his life, he still doesn't know how to react to the good gesture being shown to him by the people. They get close to the Keisen Shrine and Yukito wonders what shrine it is and why the third island is so different from the first and second islands. Yato explains to him that the Keisen Shrine is a shrine dedicated to the opposing dragon boss of fire and water. The two dragons have been on the fourth island for ages, and disaster always occurs when one goes on a rampage, which is why the shrine was built to pacify them. Chitaro says a dragon went on a rampage when they were little, causing a volcanic eruption that affected even the first island. The fire dragon went on a rampage on the fourth island, and there was a crater lake said to have been left behind after the water dragon pacified it. However, the Kaisen Shrine's object of worship is a volcanic rock resembling the lake. Yukito remembers Aka saying that he wanted to be stronger than even the dragons, so this makes Yukito curious about the dragons. Chitaro and Yato have always known Genie to be a drunky master, but they are not impressed by his drinking personality, the dunderhead Jingi says he needs to catch a break off trekking and needs to get some drink to cure the hangover. He feels the peaches should be in bloom by now, so he tries to drag Chataro and Yato with him to have a drink and enjoy the flowers. Unfortunately for them, they slipped into a lake. Kurama comes out of the shrine and gives Yukito a warm welcome. He suggests they get the losers some new clothes before they get frozen. Yikoto follows Kurama to the archives of the shrine, and Kurama urges him to make himself comfortable. He offers Yukito some sweet candy, and since it is Yukito who asks Jingi to take him to Kurama, Kurama asks why he wants to see him. Yukito says he met Aka. He explains that Aka is exterminating the Miyatama, but with a different technique. He explains that Ama likes the Matama with a special bullet gun, and uses some strange power on the Matama. Kurama knows the sight of killing the Matama with black magic might be horrifying to Yukito, so he asks the curious poor boy how much he knows about the lay energy. Yukito does not know beyond what his scumbag master Jingi told him about the lay energy, so therefore, all he knows about the lay energy is that it flows beneath the earth and that the lay masters draw on and control the lay energy to use their powers. This feels like just a basic understanding, so Kurama feels maybe he might need to step in as his master instead of the good-for-nothing Jingi. Kurama shows Yukito the first, second, and fourth islands and explains that a large current of lay energy flows beneath the Ayaka Island. The lay energy flows everywhere, but the current is massive on Ayaka and close by. On the mainland, the whiffs of lay energy can be detected in historical shrines and special trees or rocks, 
but the island is overflowing with it. Yukito closes his eyes, and he begins to feel the sparking effects of the lay energies. Kurama explains that the lay masters borrow from the energy and use it to cast spells. Kurama also talks about the Matama bubble that is everywhere on the island. He says they are not harmful, but if a place becomes tainted or stagnant, they can turn to Ara Matama. Yukito remembers that Aka ate a Matama after killing it, and he wonders why, so Kurama says he did that to acquire the Matama power, more or less like himself, becoming tainted, like the Matama, and it's not the right thing to do, as a laymaster. The two idiots, Yato and Chitaro, call Yukito, and tell him that they have something to discuss with him. Jingi also meets Kurama, so they begin to have some conversation. Kurama asks about Aka, so Jingi says he does not look all good as a result of eating the Matama. However, the dull head Jingi feels Aka is doing all that because he does not want to see more people dying, but Kurama feels it's not the right thing to do, regardless of his reason. Kurama feels that, according to the law of nature, everyone will die, and everything will return to the lay energy. Kurama says he needs to lecture Jingi well so he can be a good master to Yukito and so that Yukito won't have to come see him about the lay energy and Aka. Chitaro and Yato take Yukito to their training garden where they test their power and abilities. They took him there because they wanted to become his friend. Yukito has always wanted to be their friend too. But the poor boy has always been scared of getting mad and hurting them with his uncontrollable power. The boys feel since he is the son of their master's master, he will also have some crazy potential, and it will only be right for him to be a student under their master too. Chitaro and Yato get into their training garden. Chitaro is the first person that unleashes his power. He begins by casting a spell by saying all things are created with their blessing, and a small tree grows out of the soil. Yato also cast his spells, and another tree with almost the same size as the Chitaro. The two dumb boys begin to argue over whose tree turns out to be the biggest, but Yukito immediately drops them before they begin to fight. However, they feel since he is the son of the master of their master, he will have some potential too, so they ask him to cast his spells too. Behold, Yukito casts his spells too, and surprisingly, a very big tree with blossom flowers started growing uncontrollably out of the soil. Yukito has yet to have control over his power, so the tree keeps on growing without stopping. The boys begged him to stop the tree growth, but he couldn't. Luckily for him, Jingi is somewhere around the training garden, so he joins hands with Yukito to cast a spell to stop the growth of the tree. The tree finally stops growing, and just as usual, Jingi begins to run mouth as a worthy master and takes his leave. The boys find Yukito's power fascinating, so they urge him to get along with them and learn from their master, but because Jingi manages to help him stop the tree, she decides to stick with him instead. Yukito continues taking lessons on how to use and control the lay energy spell, he is gradually improving, but has yet to reach his full potential. He recites a spell by saying a fish is not meant to leave the water. This leads to the formation of a strong water barrier. Normally, he is meant to begin by sending the flow of lay energy and then drawing on it, but the reverse is the case for Yukito, which is okay. Jingi asks him to raise the water barrier above his head, and the nonchalant drunkard climbs the water barrier bubbles. A sensation of an earthquake reaches Ayaka Island, and the fear alone makes Yukito lose focus, and the water barrier collapses. The next day, Yukito tells Makoto about the earth, but Makoto says Ayaka is a volcanic island, which means the earthquake is not a new thing. Yukito feels it is meant to be a thing of fear to even Makoto, but Makoto replies that there are plans that have been put in place in case of emergency, so that they can evacuate in case of a heavy earthquake. Jingi meets them in the middle of the conversation, but instead of contributing positively to the conversation, the lumberjack asks Makoto for money, just like my teen brother always begs me for money. This does not sit well with Yukito, but Makoto gives him the money regardless, and urges him to say hello to Yanagi-sensei. Jingi shamelessly collects the money, and informs Yukito that they will be visiting his father's graveyard for the day. On getting to the grave of Yukito's father, they meet a lot of Matama playing around the graveyard. Jingi uses a broom to chase them away, and begins to clean the graveyard. Afterward, the drunk addict, Jingi, brings out some booze, but Yukito does not seem to understand what they are doing. So he asks why they are doing all this, because it quacked. Two women and an old bald man also meet in the grave to pray at their graveyard, to seek protection against the earthquake. They along with some snacks and drinks, so Ningi says, as the apprentice of the dead master, they will have to pass through him, before they can have access to the grave. He orders them to drop their drinks and snacks to him, and they all find it iacastic. While all this is going on, Yukito does not know how to react and vibe along with them, so he just stands and keeps looking at them. The old bald man tells Yukito 10 years ago that they all survived major volcanic eruptions, 
thanks to his father. Yukito asks if his father did something then, this makes the old man realize that Jingi hasn't told the little boy about his father. Jingi explains about the fire dragon that caused the volcano 10 years ago. The earthquake around Ayaka is because the dragon has gotten too strong. Yukito asks what makes the fire dragon get too strong. Jingi then begins to explain that 15 years ago, the lake on the fourth island suddenly dried off, and for some reason, the rival of the fire dragon, the water dragon, had gone missing. As a result of this, the scale tip and the balance between the fire and water dragon was thrown off. The disharmony causes the fire dragon to stagnate more and more, just like the way Matama becomes Ara Matama. Unless something changes, eventually the fourth island volcano will erupt, and all of Ayaka will sink into the sea. Sure enough, this was what happened 10 years ago, but it was Master Makoto who did something about it. He performed the ritual of dragon persifying and suppressed the power of the fire dragon, which was like a raging force of nature. So the peace of the island rested on the shoulder of Master Makoto, Yukito's father. Ibarra passes by looking all upset. Jingi tries to say hello to her, but she does not alter a word and leaves. Jingi moves to her family's grave to pay some respect to the graveyard because it's also the anniversary of her parents' death. This makes Yukito wonder if she is upset because they are celebrating on a day that is meant to be for the celebration of her parents' death. Ibarra mistakenly dropped her key around the graveyard and it was found by Yukito. Yukito suggests that they need to go to the first island to deliver the list key to Ibarra because she is going to need it. This feels like an opportunity for the lowlife master Jingi, so he agrees to follow Yukito. Coincidentally, they run into the two scumbags, Yako, and Chitaro. Yukito wonders what the two idiots are doing on the first island, so they reply that they are patrolling every town of Ayaka Island to ensure that everyone is safe as a result of the brief earthquake. They also ask Yukito and Jingi what brought them to the first island, so Yukito says they came to drop a lost property. The two doofy heads think Yukito and his lame-ass master Jingi want to drop the lost property at a nearby police station, so they request to follow them. Yukito says, they are dropping it off at Ibarra, at Ayaka Security. Immediately they hear about the Ayaka Security, they turn and begin to go on their way. On getting to Ayaka's security shop of Aka, Dinner Gaz, they meet Aka just when he is about to take his leave. They inform him that they want to return a list item, but the crazy Matama killer is not ready to listen to anything, so he urges them to see his worker, Makata. They explain to Mikata that they saw Ibarra's key at the graveyard of his parents, and that they came to apologize for partying on a day like that. Yukito seems curious, so he asks what happened to Ibarra's parents. Mikata explains that some years ago, a fire Aramatama grew so big enough to burn down a whole house. Aka tried his best, but couldn't save everyone, so Ibarra lost his parents the same day. Mikata says, people's lives and actions of Matama are all determined by the flow of lay energy. Mikata continues and says, it's just the nature of their world, and one might as well accept a smile. Some people can't accept that, and a lot of people don't even accept it. And because of this, they vent their emotions by exterminating the Ara Matama. Mikata urges Yukito to deliver the key to Ibarra himself. He says the little girl is shy but a good girl at the same, so he calls Ibarra over to the shop. Yukito hands over the key to the shy Ibarra, and she thanks him because the key would have put her in a lot of trouble if not found. Suddenly, the shop begins to shake and they think it's another earthquake. But Jingi says it's a fire Matama with a lot of fire energy. This is not looking all good, so Jingi urges Makata to call Aka before things get out of hand. AK goes to Sanji to inform him about the attack of Ara Matama in the middle of the tourist area. Although he was able to conquer the Matama with his black power, AK explains to Sanji that the first island is becoming unsafe so everyone will need to evacuate soon. Mikata receives a call from Matama that there is Ara Matama in the D ward, the tourist area. The fire Ara Matama is already burning down a house and a little girl is stuck within the house. Jingi and Yukito run towards the house to rescue the girl. Jingi immediately casts his spells and saves the poor little girl. Ibarra is still running in the direction of the Ara Matama, so Jingi urges Yukito to go after her. By the time Ibarra gets to the fire Ara Matama, the Matama is about to attack two low-life kids, but Ibarra takes over and urges the boys to run for their lives. The fire Ara Matama begins to attack Ibarra, but she keeps dating her spells and dodging all the attacks. Ibarra is getting emotional and won't run away from the Matama because she is trying to avenge the death of his parents, but she is not fit enough to handle the Matama. Luckily for her, Yukito gets to just where the fire Ara Matama is about to finish her 
with the fire attack. Yukito blocks the fire attack with the water barrier power he learned from Jingi. The way Yukito shields Ibarra with his water barrier brings back memories of how Akka protected her from the wrath of the fire Aramitama back then when it killed her parents. While Yukito blocks the attack of the fire Aramitama, he asks Ibarra if she is okay. However, the two jolly scumbags, Chitaro and Yako, also meet them there, but they are so insignificant and good for nothing. The fire Matama is a stubborn one, so it keeps throwing fire at the Yukito's barrier, but couldn't break through it. Yukito urges the two idiot boys and Ibarra to run for there. Ibarra refuses to run, and says if they run, the Matama will run after them, so she places her hand on the floor and casts a spell by saying, human knowledge and heavenly ways. This generated some sparks of light on her hand, so she jumped over the water barrier created as a shield by Yukito, and attacked the fire Matama on the other side with her sparkling light hand. But the fire Ara Matama is too strong for her, so gets thrown back like an empty piece of shit, and then recharges and attacks Matama again. The Matama counter her attack, so Yukito casts another spell, so a heavy water barrier hits the fire Matama. Just when the two useless scumbags begin to praise Yukito for his great spell, the fire Matama recharges again. The low-life lay master, Chitaro and Yako, are scared as they almost pee in their panties. However, Ibarra insists on standing on her guard, this speaks some sense into Yukito's head, so she agrees to also stand on his guard and face his fear. He urges the two musketeers to support and lend him their strength to collectively fight the fire Aramitama, and they agree. The four of them join hands together and begin to cast their various spells to tackle the Matama. Ibarra does not carry the last two, so she also casts her spell. The Matama begins to get weakened by the collective spells and power of the kids so it tries to escape, but they won't let it go without pacifying it. Yukito casts his water spell once again, and this time, the Matama is captured within the water. Then Ibarra uses her sparkling light to finish the Matama, and the crazy creature gets pacified. Just whenever they begin to jubilate, another three fire Ara mistake arrives from nowhere. These three Matama seem to be more powerful than the previous one, and now they need to run. Yukito tries to play the hero role, but his water spell is not sufficient to pacify these Matamas. Just then try to run away, but the Matamas block their escape route and surround them with fire. Luckily for them, Akka and Master Kurama arrive just in time. Akka uses his special gun to kill one of the Matama, and Kurama uses his spell to pacify another one. For the first time in a long time, Akka and Kurama meet. Akka tries to eat the core of the Matama that he shoots, but Kurama immediately pacifies it. This annoys Akka, so he angrily tells Kurama to get her off his way, he feels their master died because they were all weak. The last Matama seems to be very strong, so it joins the body of the dead and the pacified Matama to its own. Kuruma casts his spells to pacify one party of the Matama, and Akka shoots the Matama to get the core so he can eat it as usual. Aka tries to approach the core of the Matama, but Kuruma uses his magical blade to stop him. Akka is also powerful, so he uses his light to stop the effect of the magical blade. Aka begins to cast his black power spell, and Kurama tells him that he might not be able to return to human form if he eats the core of the Matama. Kuruma begins to cast another spell, and then sends a sparking light towards Akka. Akka also replies, and begins to cast his black power. Things get crazy between them, and they begin to fight. Suddenly, Jingyi is seen on top of a pole, and the drunky master casts his spell too, and this pacifies the core that is causing the fight between Akka and Kurama. Jingyi then tells the two elders to stop their uselessness, or else their students will begin to cry. After everything has died down, the useless nitwit, who only shows up when the fight has almost ended, Jingyi, begins to run mouth as usual that he is the one that saves their lives. This does not sit well with the boys, so they all yap him because when he was needed the most, he was nowhere to be found like a lost dog, only to come back to steal the show. Yukito appreciates Ibarra and commends her resilience even when it feels like they are going to be liked by the Ara Matama. He looks forward to working with her in the future, so Ibarra shared her contact code with him. Ibarra tries to share her contact code with Yako and Chitaro too, but considering the rift between their master and Akka, after some heart-to-heart -heart conversations, they finally agree to exchange contacts. Makoto begins to narrate what happened 10 years ago on Ayaka Island to Yukito. One day, Akka, Kurama, and their master, Makoto, arrive home after pacifying Aramitama. However, Akka sustained some injuries in the process of pacifying the Aramitama. This does not feel like a big deal to their master, so he asks Makoto for food and first aid for the injured Akka. Makoto attended to Akka and assured him that his injury was not so bad and all he had to do was to rest a bit. 
Kurama blames him for underrating the Ara Miasma and rushing in too fast. This annoyed Akka because he was only trying to cover up for the nitwit, Kurama. Thereafter, Kuruma begins to train and work on their spell rituals. The lazy dwarfs, Jingi, meets them while they are training and applaud them for being hardworking. However, Aka urges the jerk, Jingi, to also join the training since he is also a lay master, but the good-for-nothing nitwit says he is a secret weapon and does not need to train hard like a soldier who has signed a death warrant. Master Makoto hears this and lands a brain-rotting kick on his head for being lazy. AKA suggests and asks Master Makoto if he can allow Karuma to preside over the dragon pacifying ritual. Master Makoto, however, feels the boy is not yet ready because pacifying the dragon is another level of difficulty. AKA reminds Makoto that he once said Karuma would make a fine priest for the Kasen shrine some days. Karuma feels he is not yet ready to even think of being a priest, but Aka believes with his support, Karuma would be a fine priest. Master desks there is no need to rush, but with his skills, he will be able to preside over the rituals in a few years with the help of enthusiastic Akka, the lazy-ass Jingi, and his supervision. The water dragon has left, and now that the fire dragon misses the water dragon, he's at risk of becoming Aramama. Now all they can do is settle him down by sealing him on a volcano, and it's important to suppress the eruption until the fire dragon returns. But even if they suppress it, the fire dragon's strength will grow to an unprecedented level, aka doubts if suppressing is really what they need to do. But the masters urge them to watch what they will be doing closely because it will be useful to them in the future. While they have this conversation, Makoto comes with shaved ice and asks what type of flavor they all want. The good-for-nothing brat, Jingi is the first person that says he wants strawberries. Master Makoto feels no one should take anything before him. Some days after the earthquake begins to prepare, Master Makoto says he needs to pop over to the mainland to get the ritual object he had custom made to pacify the fire dragon, so he orders his students to hold down the fort while he is away. After Master Makoto has left, the Matama begins to behave strangely, and the fourth island influence begins to spread everywhere while Master Makoto is away. Karuma feels they need to do something because the quake seems to have weakened the seal, and if an actual eruption occurs, it will destroy the whole of the Ayaka Islands. The fire dragon originally grew to dry up the lake, and the water dragon in it. Because they have been keeping their fire dragon trapped inside a barrier, his bomb is ready to explode. Now the only option left for them is to conduct the pacifying ritual because their master is not at home. AKA and Kurama decided to try their best and conduct the ritual. Jingi is still young, so he is a bit timid, so they ask him to stay behind with little Yukito and Momoko. AKA and Kurama fly off to where the fire dragon is dominating, and behold, the dragon is already taking over the island. AKA says if the fire power should overflow, then it will be very disastrous. Kurama says they have come a long way and can't afford to lose their nerves. The two of them begin the dragon rituals and prayers. The dragon prayers then begin to weaken the fire dragon effect. They continue the spells by trimming the edge of the sedge blades, cutting them into pieces, and scattering them, then speaking the prayer to the heavenly supreme being. These spells create a barrier that stops the effect of the fire dragon. When it seems like they are neutralizing the effect of the fire dragon, the fire dragon comes out as a huge dragon blowing fire from his mouth and all over his body. This scares the hell out of the two lowlife's laymasters. However, Karuma feels as long as they continue pouring power into the barrier, the dragon won't be able to break through it. The dragon then begins to overpower the barrier, Akka seems to be tired, so he falls on his knees. He urges Kurama to protect the barrier and not bother about him, but Kuruma can't watch him suffer, so he leaves the barrier and jumps away, along with tired Akka, and the barrier is broken by the crazy huge dragon. Finally, Master Makoto arrives when it looks like the poor boys are losing it. It's too late to stop the volcanic eruptions. Makoto uses his spells to seal the fire dragon, a measure to keep the Ayaka from being destroyed by the dragon. Now Master Makoto needs to risk his life to tackle the dragon in what feels like a 59-50 battle. He asks Kuruma to take tired and injured Akka and run while he battles the dragon. Just after running, they hear a loud sound of the eruption. As the day broke, it looked like nothing had happened on the island. Akka and Kurama went back, and sadly, they found the dead body of their master. Mikoto's death came as a terrible shock to Akka. After the funeral, he left the island. Kuruma never told Mokoto the details, but Makoto says she heard the two of them arguing over their future as lay masters, so they parted ways. Several years later, Akka returned having learned some dangerous spells, and their relationship with Kurama became strained. Even though Yukito's father was the one who brought the two of them together, Yukito feels it was his father's death that led to their feud. Yukito remembers Jingi helping him when he was still young during the eruption, 
so Momoko reminds him that it was 10 years ago. The story gets boring to the nonchalant fool Jingi, so he urges Momoko to cut off the story and forget the terrible past. Yukito is fast asleep, while Jingi is busy drinking alcohol, like an uncultured fool. While sleeping, Yukito falls into his usual dream. He finds himself in the middle of a river sinking deep in his dream. He keeps on sinking till he gets to the part of the river filled with something that looks like a burning matama, and begins to choke. This nightmare wakes him up, and he begins to breathe heavily. Jingi rushes over to him, to see what's wrong with him, so he says he had a nightmare. Yukito gets a message from his new friends, Yako and Chitaro. Jingi wants to know who is texting him, but the smart boy hides his phone before he reads the messages. Chair and Yako invite Yukito to the Kasan festival that will be taking place at the Kasan shrine. It seems like his first ever outing with friends. So Jingi offers him a mask and explains to him that it's a custom on the island so people wear masks to the Kasan festival. However, the mask given to Yukito was last worn by her late father, Master Mikoto. Yukito and Jingi get to the Kasan festival, all masked up. Yukito sees a lot of people at the festival and begins to get excited. Jingi seems surprised as to why seeing people is exciting to him, I mean for someone who once lived in the city. Yukito is getting all excited because it seems like his first time attending a festival with people. Some boys mock Jingi and Yukito for dressing like slobs to the festival, but Jingi feels men look better when they dress down. Jingi asks Yukito if Mokoto gives him some money. This disgusts Yukito, and he says he has never seen a master as useless as Jingi, who sponges off his students and spends money on dumb things. Suddenly, Ibarra arrives looking gorgeous in a yukata. Ibarra asks why the nonchalant fool, Jingi, is also present at the festival, so Yukito says he was the one who asked him to follow him. Jingi calls Yukito to one side and asks him to compliment Ibarra's look in the yukata dress, but the <laughs> replies that he does not know what to say or how to compliment a girl's look. Jingi knows that it's what he can do, so he lures him to at least say something nice about the poor girl. Yukito then summons the courage and tells Ibarra that she looks great in her yukata dress. It's time to get on the stalls at the festival to eat all the delicious food, but Yukito says they need to first find the two idiot boys, Chitaro and Yako. This does not sit well with Genie, because he can't wait to start devouring all the varieties of food present at the festival. Chitaro and Yako are seen with Kurama, they are questioning him for handling freebies. Yako says he saw him give out three charms to someone who bought an Ima earlier. Chitaro also says, if they keep handing out freebies, they will run at a loss. But Kurama says, he can't help it, since it makes people happy. They finally find Chitaro and Yako, so they join them. Kurama recognizes the mask that Yukito is wearing, and it brings back the memory of his late master. Yukito asks, why everyone is wearing a mask? Kurama then replies that non-humans such as monsters used to attend the festival and wear the masks to make humans forget who they are and enjoy the festival with the non-humans. Kurama gives the kids permission to enjoy and have fun at the festival, but asks Jingi to stay behind to help him in his shop, M. The bastard Jingi says he needs to go along with the kids. Kurama reminds him that a master should not sponge off his student, so he has to stay behind with him. On their way, Yako and Chitaro ask Ibarra why she was glancing at their master so much while he was talking. She replies that since their master is an enemy to her boss, she needs to be on guard. Suddenly, Yukito is on his knees because he feels a little bit dizzy, this scares them, but he assures them that he is fine. Thereafter, they suggest that they find something to feel their empty stomach before they begin to have some fun. They begin to have the best fun of their lives, while Jingji is going on a different errand. Jingi sees them having fun, and this hurts the loser, so he decides to sponge off his student list as he has always been doing. However, Jingi feels for a kid who looks like he'd given up on everything, he has come to wear some better expression of recent, which is just the way it should be L, so he leaves him to have fun. Later, Ibarra has some blisters as a result of the getta that she is wearing. Yako suggests that they get her some bandages, but as the shy girl that she is, Ibarra declines. Luckily for her, they meet Mamako, who eventually bandages her with the blister. Sanji passed out because he had a lot of drinks during the festival. Yukito smiles just like his father, Mikoto, and this brings back some memories of how his father used to smile and also make all forms of ruckus with his friend, Sanji. However, Yukito wants to hear more good stories about his father, so Makoto says she and Sanji will have time to tell him more about his father. Aka calls Ibarra and asks her to give the phone to Yukito. As soon as the boys hear that Aka is on the line, they almost poop in their pants. Yukito answers the call with a shaky voice because of the fear they all have for Aka. Aka calls just to confirm if Ibarra is having fun at the festival, and Yukito says with the looks of things, she is having fun. Suddenly, Yukito's eyes change to deep sharp blue, 
and he begins to feel the sensation of losing control of his power. Just like when he was still very little, he fears hurting people around, so he quickly runs to avoid being around people. As soon as he gets to a place where there is no one, his power begins to grow uncontrollably. He tries to stop and control it, but it feels like he lost control again. Yukito remembers different occasions when Jingi has helped him gain control over his power, so he decides to face his fear. He gets on his feet and begins to cast some spell. Behold, he finally gets to control his power. The spirit of his late father appears to him in masks and tells him that he can now face the truth inside him, and then he disappears. However, Yukito has a strong feeling that he has met him before, but does not recognize him. On his way back to meet his friends, he runs into Jingyi, who is drinking like an addict. He appreciates Jingyi for teaching him how to control his power, and thanks him, because he can now be around friends. Suddenly, some loud voices are heard, and it seems like an eruption is happening on the fourth island. Everyone at the Kashin Festival begins to get scared, as it feels like something terrible is about to happen. The fourth island is experiencing a huge quake. Mayor Inu Sanji picks up a megaphone and instructs everyone to stop what they are doing and listen to him. He says local officials are contacting areas around the island to confirm the situation. He urges everyone to remain calm and head to the middle of the plaza. Momoko is also on the Disaster Prevention Committee, so she says they will start sending people back home. The storms of the quake happening on the fourth island are felt everywhere, from the first to the third island. Amid the disaster, Jingi asks Yukito if he likes or hates the island. Yukito says he likes the island because he can make friends and talk to people. Jingi says he also likes the island and begins to laugh. Jingyi assures Yukito that everyone will be fine, he crosses his hand like he is about to cast a spell, and then he disappears. The next day, there is an announcement from the second island school about the earthquake that happened the previous night at exactly 8 pm. Residents are instructed to calmly move to the evacuation site. The earthquake is still happening on the fourth island, and the effect is still going around the island. Yukito's eyes change once again to a deep blue. Momoko walks in just in time to hand over his go back so he can join the Wonchon boat and evacuate with them. However, Momoko can't leave the island yet because Jingyi is yet to be back. And because of this, Yukito says he will have to stay behind to wait for Jingyi because he is worried about him. In that case, Mokoto asks Yukito to help him with some things since he is staying too. The Disaster Prevention Department of Ayaka begins to receive a lot of calls from all the residents. One of the staff reports to Mayor Inu Sanji that it has been confirmed that the second island is safe, so they are ready to be evacuated, and this gives Sanji a sigh of relief. Yukito confirms that everyone from One Chomp is present, and they are all ready to depart. Momoko urges Yukito to keep an eye on the elderly ones as they board the boat. The sound of the quakes is heard again, and and the people begin to get scared, but Momoko assures them that they will all be fine. The evacuation is going smoothly on the second island, but Sanji's major worry is the first island, because the island lay energy has been taken over by fiery energy, and this can bring about the attacks by the Aramatama. AKA's body is gradually changing into something else, and Ibarra seems worried because she does not know what is about to happen to him. Aka assures her that he will be fine and that all he needs is just to fight one more Aramitama. He urges Ibarra to meet his salesboy, Makita, because Aramitama can arrive at any point in time. The poor girl, Ibarra, says she would like to stay behind with him. This brings back the memories of how he also wanted to stay with his master 10 years ago, but because it might be too dangerous, he urges Ibarra to leave. The people continue boarding the departing boat, and then Kurama and his two idiot students arrive. Makoto seems surprised to see them unannounced, so Kurumi says they need to talk to Yukito. Yukito follows them, and when they get to the first island, Kurama says he needs to tell him about his birth. Things become awkwardly silent. Chitaro and Yako ask if they should give them some privacy to talk, but he wants the boys to be there and listen too. Kurama begins by saying that 15 years ago, the water dragon vanished significantly, and it was Master Makoto who handled the situation. However, Master was trying to restore the water dragon, so he severed the weakened water dragon from the lay energy and granted it a new form so it could be nurtured. He temporarily transformed the massive current of life into a much smaller one so that the water dragon could regain its former strength and return to the lay energy. The current small life is surprisingly Yukito. This makes Kurama guess that he is the embodiment of the water dragon. Kurama asks if Yukito will allow him to confirm his suspicions, and of course, he does not resist. Kurama confirms this and realizes that the master withdrew the water dragon from within, lay energy, and raised its embodiments as his son, which is Yukito. 
for Yukito to regain his true form and serve his true purpose of bringing harmony to the island, it will take many years of training and learning of ritual, so Kurama urges him to take baby steps and take his time to learn. However, Kurama decides to go to the fourth island and do what his master did. His students want to follow him, but he assures them that the nonchalant fool, Jingji, will look after the three of them. He spreads his magical hand fan and uses it to fly away. The two dumbheads suggest that they return to Mokoto so that they can also board the boat and leave the island, but Yukito does not feel the need to run away from his fear. He has had some encounters with the Aramatama and other things, and the place feels like home to him. Even though Yukito is yet to fully know himself after everything that was said by Kurama, he feels running away when the island needs him the most is not the best thing to do. Yako begins to think about what Kimura said about doing what his master did to protect the island. This means he also wants to sacrifice his life just as great master Mikoto did. This does not sit well with Yukito. He feels there should be something they can do to stop Kimura. The two scumbags, Chatsuro and Yako say there is nothing they can do, so they should run away. Suddenly, Ibarra appears from behind and says she is ready to go with Yukito, as the majority carry the vote. She considers herself to be two persons, because she is stronger than them, as she is also a laymaster. They finally agree to join hands together, and as friends, and see what they can do. As the scene unfolds, Kurama gets teleported to the fourth island, and begins to cast some spells, by saying after much discussion, the supreme beings concluded the emperor should create and rule over the peaceful land, and the emperor accepted their requests. The raging supreme beings across the land were asked to submit, and those who did not, were driven out. Those who expressed their discontent, as well as the rocks, trees, and grasses, fell silent, and the emperor left his throne in the plain of high heaven. As he continues his rituals and spells, Akka arrives, but Kurama says he does not need him. They begin to argue about who will face the fire dragon, till the dragon finally comes out of the eruption. AKA begins to cast his black power spells too, and as soon as his hand transforms, he jumps over to attack the dragon. Kurama uses his magic hand fan to blow him away from the dragon's side and says he will handle it by himself. Kurama jumps to attack the dragon, but Akka stops him. They join hands together and attack the dragon, but the dragon is too strong, and now it's transforming to Aramatama. Just when the dragon blows fire to finish them off, Yukito and his friend arrive, and Yukito uses his water barrier to stop the dragon's fire from hitting them. Kurama orders them to leave, but they refuse because they want to help them fight the fire dragon. In the opening scene of this episode, we are taken back to when Yukito and Jingi were still young and when the master was still alive. One morning, Jingi and Yukito were playing, and suddenly, Yukito's special water power activated, and Jingi was filled with water. Jingi wonders what is happening, and Master Mikoto explains that Yukito is a special kid with powerful water power. However, he felt that Jingi and Yukito were compatible, because Jingi also had strong water energy. Master Mikoto told Jingi a secret, and ordered him not to tell even Akka and Kurama. As the scene unfolds, Kurama urges the kids to stop the foolishness of trying to help them deal with the fire dragon, but Yukito feels they are also students of Yanagi school, and it will be more foolish for them to run when they are needed the most. AKA is a hard man, he feels since they are around, it's too late to send them back, and since they want to help, they can always flee if the battle is beyond them. AKA urges the kids to be their backup and watch their backs while they attack the fierce fire dragon. This does not sit well with Kurama, so he tells the kids not to overextend themselves. AKA and Kurama fly back to where the dragon is. Ibarra leads the kids and urges them to help her contain the target with his water barrier power. AKA is the first person who attacks the fire dragon with his black power. Kurama also adds his spell, Yukito also contributes to the battle with his water power spell, and he sends a pool of water against the burning fire dragon. Ibarra does not carry last, so she casts her spells, Ake uses his black hand to strike the fire dragon, and Ibarra contributes by using his thunder sparkling force to strike the dragon at the other end. The fire dragon goes crazy, and now it blows a heavy fire from its mouth to them, but Kurama uses his magical hand fan to block the fire from reaching Aka. Yukito begins to wonder if he is the embodiment of the water dragon. The scene unfolds again, and we are once again taken back to the past. Yukito's identity is a secret shared between Jingi and the master. The secret is unknown to both Aka and Kurama, and it became Jingi's greatest treasure, and he enjoyed discussing the secret when the older students were away. Small Jingi asked Master if he would be able to see Yukito before the water dragon ever again, but Master replied that Yukito would probably be stable enough by the time he was around Aka and Kurama's age. To maintain his human form, 
even if he regains his true power, it will come down to him, however, the master said he would have to cast a very difficult spell to manage that. After the death of Makoto, Major Inu Sanji informed Momoko that it was his dying wish for Makoto to be raised in the orphanage until he was 15 years old. Mom found it difficult to accept this because it feels cruel to send a kid who just lost his father to an orphanage. However, Jinny felt the master wouldn't do anything without a good reason, so he suggested they follow the will of his late master. Jinny knew that Yukito was sent to the mainland because of his water dragon nature, but he was not so sure of what would happen if the poor boy grew up on the mainland, and now that master was dead, he wondered who would cast the spell to turn the little boy back into a water dragon. Someone else needed to cast the spell, and now, it's up to Jingi. Jingi began to search for every spellbook, but only found fragmentary notes in the master's writings. But because he was also a student of Yanagi school, he managed to decipher what kind of spell it was. The scene unfolds, and the battle against the fire dragon continues. It got so intense that Aka had to use his special gun on the fire dragon. Now that Yukito is aware of his power, he can now unleash it. Kurama is not ready to back down, so he casts another spell. This was Master Makoto's spell, so this got Aka wondering what was about to happen. This spell is meant to seal the fire dragon back into the soil, but unfortunately, the dragon breaks the spell. The spell does not work on the dragon, so Aka also casts another spell. After casting these spells, Aka transforms into a demi-human with horns on his head, but even his demi-human form is not enough to kill the fire dragon. It feels like the battle is beyond the kids, so Kurama feels the need to use his magic to send them away before things get out of hand. The kids however want to stay in the battle with them. Yukito begins to feel like a useless piece of shit. He wonders why he can't do much, even after all the power they claim he has. Suddenly, Jingi arrives at the fight scene. The scene unfolds again, and we are taken a bit back to the past. Jingi read about how a hermit sacrificed his life to restore harmony on Ayaka Island when a fire dragon went on a rampage because the water dragon became weaker. However, the rampage happens again, and this time, Master Makoto has to sacrifice his life just like the hermit did in the past. He raised a water dragon as a human and restored its power. Jingi wondered if the spell written by his master would be sufficient to bring harmony to the island, but since it was written by his master, he had no other choice than to believe in it. However, someone else had to cast the spell since the master was dead, or else, the island would become uninhabitable like it once was. Since someone had to do it, Jingi had to do it. Fortunately, Jingi had no blood relatives, but just a few attachments. Sacrificing himself for the peace of the island was not his style, but he felt he owed the island for raising him. In exchange, he decided to do only whatever he ever wanted. He decided to live a short and fun life, which is why he has been drinking like a crazy addict. After 10 years, Jingi volunteered to pick up Yukito on his graduation day. Jingi thought Yukito would grow into someone gloomy, but after spending time with him, he realized that he was pretty earnest. Seeing him smile made him feel pretty good enough to die for him. He lived how he wanted, so he wouldn't have any regrets. But when the time came, he was pretty shocked at how scared he was and realized that he didn't want to die, but he already loved Yukito and Ayaka Island so much that he wouldn't mind sacrificing his life. Jingi asks Yukito if he wants his water power back in full force. He assures him of restoring the power if he wants since he has now learned the spell. Yukito wants to protect the Ayaka Island, so he urges Jingi to cast the spell, if truly, he has the power. Jingi summons a great amount of lay energy and explains to Yukito that to restore the water dragon, a great lay master has to act as a conduit, connecting the water dragon's soul to the lay energy. Jingi asks Yukito to jump into the lay energy that surrounds them, but the poor boy wonders what will happen afterward. Jingi explains to him that just like the hermit in the past, he will also sacrifice his life so Yukito can get his water power restored. Jingi drags Yukito into the pool of lay energy, and the little boy gets his water power restored, and he transforms into a water dragon, after. Now it's a battle between the water dragon and the fire dragon. Yukito, who is transformed into a water dragon, uses all his might and power to send a pool of water dragons toward the burning fire dragon. The fire dragon begins to fight against the neutralizing effect of the water dragon. The water dragon summoned by Yukito locks around the fire dragon, but the fire dragon is trying but possible means to avoid the water dragon. The two idiot musketeers, Chitaro and Yako, can't believe Yukito is powerful enough to control the water dragon. The battle between the dragons is a very fierce one, and as the water dragon is attacking the crazy fire dragon, the fist dragon is still managing to blow some fire towards them, and Chitaro shouts like a mad dog to encourage Yukito. However, 
Ibarra seems scared of what will happen if Yukito loses the battle against the Fire Dragon. The Tai Dragons collide again, but Kurumi feels it's more a fight, but the two rival dragons are attempting to restore harmony through conflict. This battle goes on, and now Akka and the rest are scared, because they don't know what will happen to Yukito, and wonder if he will be able to return to his human form. Kurama feels there is nothing they can do, other than to watch as the battle goes on, and be patient about what happens afterward. After a series of battles, the fire dragon gets pacified off the Aramatama, and harmony is finally restored. After the fire dragon has been neutralized, Yukito moves closer to Jingi, who is lying on the floor like a log of wood. Yukito urges the low-life drunkard to stand up so he won't get cold, but unfortunately, the loser is dead. Yukito keeps talking to the dead Jingi, with the hope of him getting up, but Jingi loses his life, in exchange for casting the spell that restores Yukito's power. The news that the fire dragon has been pacified gets to First Island, and everyone begins to jubilate as if it's the end of World War III. However, Jingi's death seems like a very big loss to Yukito, Aka Ibarra, Kurama, and his lumberjack students. Ibarra and her boss, Aka, return home looking all sad because of the death of the scapegoat, Jingi. Mataka sees Aka in a sad mood for the first time, so he asks Ibarra what the issue is, but Ibarra says she'll tell her what went wrong when they get inside. Yukiot feels sad for losing who he now sees as a brother. Kurama follows the little magician, sorry I mean Yukito home because of the estate of his mental health. Momoko expects Yukito to be happy for pacifying the fire dragon, but the boy looks extremely sad, and this makes her curious. It feels like the world is about to end in the family, and people begin to come to sympathize with the loss of a loser. Ibarra Chitaro and Yako come together to at least reminisce about the good memories of Jingi, but they can't think of one good memory, and that's because the boy himself was hopeless when he was alive. However, the boys do not hate him even with his nonchalant and extreme alcohol addiction. While they sympathize about his demise, they wonder how his closest brother, Yukito, will feel about the death of Jingi. Mayor Ino Sanji gets to Jingi's and finds out that the poor boy even tidied up his room before he died and begins to think about Jingi. Jingi never took into account how others felt, and now he has left Sanji to handle all the hard work. Jingi has always been a willful child, and he put Sanji through a lot as his guardian, but his death is something Sanji never wanted to witness. AKA seems to find it unbelievable that Yukito is the water dragon and wonders where the little boy learned the spells from. Kurama brings out their master's book and explains to Akka that he found it inside Jingi's room. The book contains the spell that was used by the previous lay master, and it was documented by Master Makoto probably to use it later in the future. Kurama knows that there is no way Jingi would have learned the spells easily considering the level of his skills, but might have put in a lot of effort for a very long time to learn it, even as it required him to sacrifice his life in exchange, and just to save the island from falling apart by the fire dragon and the Aramiasma, aka gets emotional and feels the boy was an idiot for hiding it from them. However, Kurama feels Jingi hides it, because he knows that if they had known about the spell, they would have done the same, and sacrificed themselves. And to prevent this, and also to bring back harmony to the island, he had to sacrifice himself to cast the spell, and restore the fire dragon. All this does not speak well with Akka, and he feels Kurama does not care about who dies. So far it restores peace and harmony. Akai drags Kurama by his clothes, and screams at him like a mad dog. Kurama dusts off Akka's hand off his clothes. Kurama also goes crazy and says that Akka does not know him well. He says he risks his life to pacify the fire dragon, but couldn't. As the heir to the Kasan shrine, and as the senior student of Yanagi's school, he feels so ashamed of himself. However, he gives Akka a brain-resetting nod on the head. AK also feels Kurama does not understand him. He says he was reading to sell his skill and acquire power by all means to defeat the fire dragon and protect the island but failed. The two of them feel like losers, and they begin to fight. Before it gets too bloody, Ibarra and Kurama's students arrive, and stop them from showing us a John Cena and the Rock type of fight. Yukito refuses to leave his room because he is still so down and keeps feeling bad about the death of Jingi. Momoko walks up to him and urges him to cheer up. However, Yukito blames his weakness for the death of Jingi. He feels Jingi won't have died and won't have cast the spell that led to his death. Momoko urges him to at least come out to see Jingi's dead body before his burial. Yukito meets Sanji, who is keeping vigil after all the mourners have left in Sanji's room. Sanji thanks and appreciates Yukito for pacifying the dragon on behalf of the islanders, but Yukito says he didn't do anything, and explains that it was Jingi who cast the spell that restored the dragon's water in exchange for his life. The island was again protected by a lay master in exchange for their life, 
just like it happened 10 years ago, when Master Makoto also sacrificed his life to bring peace to the island. Sanji asks Yukito to spend some time with the dead body of Jingi. Jingi moves closer to his dead body and gets mad because Jingi had to die for them. He sees it as a very selfish thing to do. Suddenly, Yukito finds himself in a different realm, filled with massive lay energy, without even knowing what's happening. Surprisingly, he finds Jingi hanging in the shallow part of the massive lay energy calling for help. But the dumb Yukito does not know what to do to help. Yukito returns to normal life and informs Sanji and Momoko that he finds Jingi hanging in the middle of massive lay energy. This makes him feel there might still be a way of bringing Jingi back to life, so he urges them to call on Kurama and others. Yukito begins to run like someone being chased by a crazy dog. He ran past Aka's shop and Kurama's place. Aka asks where Yukito could be running too late in the night, but maybe he needs Google to get his answer. As Yukito keeps running, sparks, water, and harmless Matama begin to generate on every one of his footprints. The water begins to form pools and water, and this forces Yukito to use his power to jump. Once again, he finds himself in the pool of a massive river of lay energy. The river lay energy has become more massive. He begins to wander around within the river of the lay energy like a lost fowl. He finds some Matama within the massive lay energy and wonders if the place is where lives flow together or maybe the single chain of life itself is the lay energy. Yukito knows he needs to find Jingi within the lay energy. He keeps swimming through the lay energy and as he does, he keeps moving towards the very deep and condensed part of the lay energy. He sees a core mantle that disappears in no time. Suddenly, he hears a thick voice like that of a smoker from nowhere. It turns out to be his late father. His father, Makoto, is in a mask, and he begins to speak in parables. It didn't take Yukito much time to discover that the man under the mask was his father. Makoto says Yukito's self-image is a human form, and all that happened, wouldn't have been possible if he had been raised on Ayaka Island without his father. Yukito asks his dead father what he is doing inside the river of lay energy. Makoto then replies that he is keeping the fire dragon in check until the water dragon is awakened. Makoto feels now that the water dragon has awakened. Yukiot is more important than him. He says there was a risk he'd be enthralled by the agitated fire dragon if he grew up close to the dragon without him. So to weaken his connection as much as possible, he had to be raised as a human outside without any contact with anyone on the island. Makoto laid the foundation to become a guardian deity of the island who could speak and empathize with them. Makoto asks Jingi what brings him to the river of the lay energy, so he replies that he is looking for Jingi and asks his father if he has seen it. Makoto says that poor Jingi might have been swept away by the massive lay energy. This scared Yukito, so he begs him to take him to where Jingi is. Makoto does not have any choice but to agree with the water dragon. However, the massive lay energy begins to hinder the movement of Yukito within the R pool of lay energy. Makoto urges him to stand his guard and maintain his composure and steeze. Yukito can't even force his way, or else the Matama in the lay energy will turn to Ara Matama. Yukito casts one of the spells that was taught by Jingi, and seeing him use the spell, excites his father because it means he learned some meaningful form from Jingi. Yukito regains his composure, and they continue their journey within the energy of Lei, to find Jingi. As the scene unfolds, a quake sensation is felt on the island. Suddenly, Aramatama appears out of the way, but the boys are ready to do anything to stop it from disturbing their master. They hear the sound of a gunshot, and it's Mr. Eika doing it. Ibarra asks where Yukito is, so Chitaro answers that he went to the Lei to save Jingi, whose slip is still within the Lei energy. However, AKA does not feel Yukito will be able to return from the massive lay energy. More Aramatamas arrive, and Kurama feels it's his ritual that is summoning the unwanted guest from the lay energy. AKA says if that be the case, he won't let any of Aramatama interfere with Kurama's ritual. Yukito and Makoto finally get to where Jingi is. The dance is seen crying for help because he seems to be getting swept away by the massive lay energy. Yukito grabs the and questions him for dying and leaving the rest of his family to mourn. Yukito sees it as being selfish for dying without considering how it will hurt his people. Jingi says there was nothing for him to do than to take the fall for his people. However, Makoto decks his head and tells him that there are other ways he could have coke about it instead of sacrificing himself. Makoto says he left the spell for time when things get really bad. He also says, already told Sanji to bring Yukito to the island when he turns 15, and if the water dragon embedded in Yukito won't be awakened on time, then they should prepare to make the island burn down, instead of anybody sacrificing himself. Jingi replies that all these are easy for a great hermit, however, 
they have their circumstances and feelings. The conversation begins to get boring, so Jingi asks Yukito how he is going to bring him back to life since that is the reason why he dives into the lay energy. Yukito feels it might be impossible to bring the dead back to life, but Makoto has a strong belief that it can be done. Yukito gets caught up in the lay energy, and now bro does not even know the way back to the island, However, Major still knows the way to the island, because Yukito shattered his seal when he dove into the lay energy, but feels they will only be able to get out in about 40 to 50 years. This annoys Jingi, who can't wait to get back to the earth, so he urges Makoto to quit his hermit talk for a second. Yukito sees a bright light on the far end of the lay energy, so he suggests that they follow the path. Makoto feels excited to have talked to his boys after a long time in the lay energy, so he graces them and urges them to leave and return to the earth. Kurama continues his rituals to get Jingi and Yinkuto back to the earth. Suddenly, Kurama feels the sensation that the boys are tending toward the earth, so he calls on Akka to take over and drag them using his black magic. AKA needs to keep his black magic hand in Lei's energy to drag Yukito and Jingi out. The process feels like a very hard task because it requires a lot of superpower and energy. Ibarra, Yako, and Chitaro begin to pray for Yukito to make it back to life. Allah begins to drag Yukito out of the lay energy gradually, but the fire dragon stops them a bit because he does not want the water dragon to leave. Yukito, the water dragon, promises the fire dragon that he will come back, so it allows them to leave. Yukito makes it out alive from the lay energy and the dead body of Jingi, who is lying like a log of wood at home, wakes up back to life. The dust settles and the future of Ayaka is revealed. Yukito's journey concludes, but the impact of his tale will endure. Friendships forged and lessons learned will forever remain. The magic of Ayaka will live on, a beacon of hope and light. The legend of Yukito Yanagi will inspire generations to come. In the end, the power of courage and heart prevailed in Ayaka, 